underpaid, not many hours, not taken seriously, not invited to staff meetings. These are all things that exist within my, my own organization. We operate out of the West Community Health Center. Um, our project is a collective, um, but we're operating within a hierarchy. We're operating within an institution that says that I am the coordinator and they are the peers. Um, so it, yeah, it's always been a key, and these are challenges that we face all the time. So this is Trip. We're based out of Toronto. We were founded in 95, um, five partners, four partners. And uh, we operate in dance music venues, whether it's clubs, parties, underground parties. Um, so we do a combination of outreach, uh, booth outreach, which is kind of like what we have in the corner over there, and all those resources are free. We welcome you to take them and bring them to your communities as well after the presentation. Um, so we'll set up our booth usually in a party setting, um, formerly known as <coughs> people don't really call it party sprayers anymore, um, and TRIP doesn't call itself the Toronto River Info Project anymore, we call ourselves TRIP because the term rain is really contentious right now. Um, we also do bag outreach, so we'll generally do bag outreach at more 19 plus venues. Um, so we usually have our party packs, which are there in the corner. Um, it has an info card with our website on it, um, condo, mood for safe sex, and also a straw. Um, we also do workshops for other agencies and service providers, volunteer groups, students, um, <coughs> a way of disseminating information. Um, of course, we also do special events, um, kind of like Shambhala. We do events like WEMP, Pride, Marijuana March, um, and I also put renegade parties as a thing that we're doing that's more new. Um, underground parties that happen under bridges, um, in ravines, in abandoned warehouses, um, and this is where more underage youth are congregating because they can't. There's not very many all ages venues in Toronto anymore, so in order to reach those youth, that's where we're finding ourselves. Um, and this is just an example of kind of a festival setup that we'll have. So much like Mind, Mind Honey Love, we'll have an uh, area which is like a safe space for people to come and show and talk about their drug use. If parties being put on by like uh, an organization that doesn't make money or whatever, do you, you like ask them beforehand if you're welcome there? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And we face a lot of stigma as well within the larger scene because we're associated with younger ravers. So it's becoming increasingly harder to break into venues that we've traditionally been a part of for years. Yeah. Um, it's really sad. Um, so other activities that we do, literature, you can see our literature on the table, graphic design, multimedia design, writing articles, conducting research, we do surveys, surveys every year um, on drug use within our community, um, workshops by more the volunteer base um, and the broader community, construction and complete hours of surveys. Um, there's always opportunities for hiring. We have three peer outreach workers um, who um, are constantly changing. So within the volunteer base, there's room to actually have a paid job eventually if you're reliable and steady volunteer. Um, and also fundraising events. Um, we started to have movie nights, which is really fun. Um, we'll play movies. We did Midsummer Night's Rave, and we also played a movie on Knowing Your Rights, and we had a booth set up, and we had a before a party. So Lots of people came out, and it was a really fun thing to do in the home center. And I'm going to hand it over So, um the interesting thing about um, <coughs> this Man Body Lab was actually started by.